Hello, and welcome to The Vox Show, where we discuss tomorrow's news today with the world's most accurate psychic, and here she is now, Vox. Hey, Lori, how are you doing? So, here we are, uh, almost at the end of 2012, and uh, we're still here. Yeah, yeah, obviously the world didn't come to an end. So, what are your thoughts on the end of the Mayan calendar? Well, as I predicted that we were going to still be around, so that's always good to know. But uh, I've, I've uh, started a, you know, my blog where I put a post in about this situation, so you guys can look that up at Vox.org on the uh, first day of 2012. But long story short, the basic idea is it's the end of the calendar. So, Lori, so yeah. when your calendar runs out, what do you do? Uh, buy a new one. Thank you. Okay. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, genius are us. So mm -hmm. basically what the minds did for us that was really helpful was they allowed us to see, you know, the whole love, the whole cycle laid out before us. And right. what it really is, is it's the start of a new cycle. This is obviously the rinse cycle. <laughs> <laughs> rinse and repeat. Yes. Thank you for noticing. So um, some things that I have talked to people about was the fact that uh, a couple of years ago, Pluto moved into the sign of Cancer, which is in the exact opposite sign that Pluto was in when our country was created on um, July 4th, 1776. Mm -hmm. So, in 1929, the first major collapse of the stock market, Pluto went back into Capricorn, and okay. we could see all the little people jumping out of the windows. Right. Okay, so what it is now, it basically is the time where Pluto is back in the sign of Cancer, the polar opposite sign. And so it's a different kind of depression. It's, it's, it's an emotional depression, but it, it is a real financial depression. Mm. Uh, now the people that have been following my blog and listening to me for a few years uh, will know and testify to the fact that I literally predicted what happened in September 2008 to the extent that me and my father we took all of our money out of the bank and you know placed it elsewhere where it would be safe and literally 72 hours later Washington Mutual folded Ooh. and so I put my money where my mouth is I am not a legal advisor I am not a financial advisor however I'm a damn good astrologer and a damn good numerologer so if I tell you things it's not to create fear it's to create knowledge and awareness of a situation so that you can you know protect yourself and I was able to save a lot of people hundreds and thousands up to millions of dollars um, you know just preparing them for that horrible time which we just basically entered a couple of years ago now uh, October 9th 2009 Saturn moved into Libra creating like a t-square for our country between cancer our, our country's ruler Pluto and Saturn not a fun time was it and it hasn't been since that time mm -hmm. and uh, even though Saturn is exalted in Libra you know we did get the crap beat out of us although it was with a big smurf ball <laughs> <laughs> but we were attacked right. so those are some little tidbits about what's going on and even though it's kind of uh, flowing through that original question that you asked about like what about the end of the Mayan calendar mm -hmm. this is the beginning of a new time and this is really the time going on being completely you know, incensing and, and being very fussy about it. And Aquarius is not your fun time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got this amazing rap of being this wonderful time, but it's really not. It's fixed air. And air, when it's fixed, quickly becomes stagnant. So that's, that's your whole hallmark for the Aquarius. Smog. Thank you. Oh. And um, interesting, like, word, word place I like to do, the word new age you translate it into French, it becomes the word nuage, which means cloud. <laughs> oh. <laughs> which, uh, that's the ramblings of an insane mind, of course, but I do think it lends itself, you know, to understanding that. Now, when is our uh, supposed fiscal cliff, or A fiscal cliff, that's what everybody wants to know about. Uh, supposedly that goes into effect January 1st when the Bush tax cuts expire. So they have to hammer out some sort of agreement, otherwise everyone's taxes go up. And uh, what I heard on the radio today is a household uh, that makes $50,000 a year will pay between $2,500 and $3,000 more in taxes. 
Right. And, and basically, that's, yeah. We're already being squeezed. Well, psychically, the vision that comes up, and maybe some people will say this is a no-brainer, but my psychic information comes from astrology, numerology, and also using tarot, the Thoth deck, which is extremely accurate. Now, the basic idea here is that the bastard freaking rich people, okay, their taxes will only go up just a certain amount, but will not go up to the amount that Obama wants to push it, correct? Right. So basically, this is another example of the privileged rich screwing the little man, you mm -hmm. know, the regular people, because they don't give a flip. They can afford that extra, you know, amount on top, because it's going to be less money than they would be required under the new tax increase for their financial, you know, their financial numbers at the yes. end of the year. They won't be able to afford to create any jobs as if that is a big concern for people who have, like uh, Bill Gates, like a, hundred, a few hundred billion in the bank. They really just don't care. So what's the bottom line question is what? Will we be falling off the fiscal cliff? They're going to, I can't even believe this, uh, the Five of Wands, Saturn and Leo says that they're going to seem to ask for some kind of time element, which they've already had enough time to come up with this. So, are, are the Republicans, are they going to allow the uh, the increases to the taxes to be applied to the, uh, what is it, the 3% of the rich or what? Supposedly there was already um, an, an offer to tax people who made over $1 million a year, but that was rejected. Well, we can only know, you, you almost like, I hate to say this, you almost don't need a psychic for this, but the answer is I don't see them fixing this. I really don't. They're going to toss the dog a bone. It's going to make them look like, you know, give them a half of a gold star to look like they're playing ball. And very clearly, they are not playing ball. So whatever this fiscal cliff is, the Six of Swords says we're probably going to dive right off of it. Now, the wording for how they're going to put that mm -hmm. is going to keep the Republicans in a pseudo-friendly light. Like, oh, well, we tried. Quite frankly, they haven't tried, they are not trying, and they will not try. And they will just show, uh, uh, like, just a toss away performance, like to pretend as if they really mm -hmm. will ever try. They're, they're phoning it in? They're phoning it in. Very good, very well put. Okay. So, um, what does this mean? Let, let's have some very specific. And what questions. does that mean for us? How will that impact, you know, Joe, every man oh, on Main Street? Um, well, that, I'm going to answer that question in one second. The okay. first one will be Will the tax increases for the, the wealthiest people, will it go through? Uh, chariot says <laughs> it's pretending to go through. I don't believe it. How will mm -hmm. this affect regular people, people middle class and lower? Get the Nine of Swords, Mars, and Gemini. Oh. No, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Am I feeling now? Here's the beauty of it uh, I'm kind of psychically jumping into a future question you might have thought to ask about okay. um, <laughs> civil huh. war. Oh, yes. In our country? Yes. Now, you and I have been friends for quite a few years, mm -hmm. okay? And I've told you before, and I remember telling you about two, three years ago that there was going to be an uprising or a revolution. Mm -hmm. Did I believe what I was saying? No, I did not. A good psychic doesn't have to believe what they're saying. They're just going to read it without spinning it to their own, you know, device. But I didn't believe it, and I, I we all know now what happened. There was the, uh, what was the 99% or the 1%? Oh, oh, the Occupy movement. That happened. Is that mm -hmm. not a revolution? Well, it was the beginnings of one. Well, it was pretty serious. I mean, there was a lot, there was like thousands and thousands of people protesting. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely the beginning of a revolution that will happen. The grassroots. Yeah. And that happened two years after I predicted that there was going to be a formal, you know, movement that's mm -hmm. going to address it. And I didn't believe it was going to happen because let's let's get real. This is a nation uh, who is completely, you know, addicted to video games, potato chips, watching television, and shopping. American Idol. Well, we don't want to trash anybody in particular, but it is no. the American Idol, I D L E. Right. Opinion. And we're just sitting around thinking, okay, well, as long as I can go out and order a pizza, you know, and, and watch cartoons, oh, you know, 
it, it's like the ostrich hiding its head in the sand. What, and it's like my famous uh, friend's joke, which was these people were smoking opium in this huge building in China. Mm -hmm. And somebody ran in and said, oh, there's a fire. And uh, one of the addictive men smoking his opium pipe said, well, what floor is it on? And the guy said, well, you know, the third floor. He goes, well, it's not here yet. And that's the exact kind of attitude that's destroying our yep. country. Yep. And nobody's taken the Republicans to task. And I will tell you right now, I am not partisan. I always vote for the person I think is best equipped for the job. Mm -hmm. That is somebody that has a reasonable chance of winning. Therefore, I hate to say, I really, I don't tend to vote libertarian or independent. I said, if you're going to use a vote, like, let's make it count. Let's vote for the lesser of two evils, right. if you know what I mean. Tweedledum or Tweedledee. Exactly. And right now it's Tweedledee. George Bush was Tweedledum. <laughs> and dumber. <laughs> and about, you know. Yeah. And, and not for anything, but he's a cancer, um, probably actually malignant by now, but <laughs> his sun sign is at almost the exact degree of our nation's sun. Mm -hmm. And he was the son of somebody else who had a lot more intelligence. But the thing is, if anybody wants to point fingers, and I'm not necessarily saying we should do that, mm -hmm. but the cause of this disaster is the politics and the financial you know, disaster that was put in place by George W. Bush. And and you don't have to be psychic and you don't have to be Nostradamus to figure this crap out. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I have uh, likened the whole Bush administration to the, the fall of Rome, where I attribute George W. Bush to King Pompey, who, while Caesar was out of town banging in Cleopatra and Alexandria, or what would become Alexandria, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Pompey raided the Federal Reserve. Sound familiar? Yes, yes it does. You know. So history is always repeating itself yes, continually. Absolutely. And my, my method for figuring that out is this. History repeats itself because we are so literal in how we, how we take that phrase. It repeats itself because we don't recognize it while it's happening again and again. So we need to open our eyes Pay attention, and uh, you know it goes into even being psychic. Why, you know, psychics are you know like trash a lot of times is because people that are in positions of power don't want you to know that things are happening that you can protect yourself with, and so that's why you get all these you know lame ass people out there pretending to be psychic. You know, everybody and his brother because nobody's paying attention. But I'm serious. I'm really serious. This is not a show for your entertainment at all. You may laugh, but we're dead serious. And we have the knowledge to bring this information to the general public, and hopefully people will listen and, you know, uprise. I mean, seriously, we, we need to, like, do more than just sit back and complain. So, um, so the end of the Mayan calendar is happening at just the time where we are, we need to take on reclaiming our country? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so that's interesting how the the timelines are coinciding. Yeah. They like, did know what was going on. When we answer that card, we get the moon on the bottom, which is the priestess card, and literally the moon card, which is Pisces, which is Neptune is at zero degrees Pisces right now. Hmm. And I find that really, really important. Neptune in Pisces, uh, anybody got a leaky, wet, moldy uh, basement anywhere in the United States right about now? <laughs> Thought so. Mm. And uh, how I came from America, one of America's top 100 psychics to becoming the world's most accurate psychic is I am the only psychic in the world that went on record, in print, and on broadcast waves to tell people Wall Street would be closed on October 29th, 2012. That never even happened on October 29th, 1929. And I predicted the tsunami in Japan 72 hours before that happened. I predicted major earthquakes. This is all printed. This is not me just blowing hot air. This is all documented stuff. And I'm telling you right now, this is just the beginning. Like that really bad old Chicago song. Oh, right. Only the beginning. Exactly. Or like the carpenters, we've only just begun. You know, to have our ass kicked by Mother Nature. So, all these things that we're talking about right now, really great question, right? Like, end of the Mayan calendar, fiscal cliff, 
I had no idea that I was going to link the two. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. That wasn't a, a, like a decision. It's just so obvious that it's happening and the time frame in which it's happening is so dead on. Wow. That is really heavy. Really, really heavy.